Outside of Canada, our winters are pictured as great frozen forests or serene landscapes where skaters and skiers glide. For farmers and hunters, it's true, but for those who have lived through a few city winters, mornings when the car wouldn't start, slushy afternoons, evenings when the furnace broke down and the plumbing burst, there's been time to wonder how we've survived. We thought of this recently when we looked up two old artist friends, Gordon Rayner and Robert Markle. They've been friends for 15 years, and there's something about the good times they have together that constitutes a kind of survival kit for the numbing Canadian winter. She asked you that. I mean, here it's a, is a rumor. Yeah, you are everybody Indian. has a rumor. Yeah. <laughs> are you part Indian? Yeah. What well, kind? The most part. The best part. The best part. What kind of Indian? What tribe? Mohawk. Right. Oh, I'm one still... of the rare Mohawk Indians that are, is uh, afraid of heights. Afraid of heights. <laughs> my brother and my father. My father, when he was alive, was a steel worker. And, and my brother climbs, loves it up there. Does he? Would rather be up there than down here. And I have, I would rather be down here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get up there. I just know for sure that I'd rather be down here. You don't think about being Indian? You don't identify? No, not much. really. I'm I've, starting I've to think about it now, but only in terms of maybe doing something. I, but I'm not really, I don't think about any of those things. You know what I mean? Not just that. What else? So Beyond immediate family, you're very close to your Yeah, very close to my immediate family. And I'm not so...
or fame. I don't think about fame. You don't think about fame? No. Or art. I don't think about art very much either. Do you? I don't think about art. I think about ideas to do. Oh, yeah, but that's your job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you right. think about your job. Right. I believe in the possibility that to really know. I think that you can know. I think that it's it's possible for a human being to capital K know. You know what I mean? Like really understand, really have the knowledge of his own self, I suppose, and, and therefore everything. I think that's possible, and I think that one of the vehicles in which man uses in order to to sharpen his senses or to keep refueling is his art. Jingle, jingle. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Telephoto. <laughs> Want to see a telephoto? <laughs> Could never keep a secret. I always telephoto. Would you send your daughter to a school with teachers like that, sir? <laughs> Oh, this is, you got to have a picture of this. Easy Rainer. Mike Saracen cut this out and sent it to me from the back of a cereal box in uh, California. And I just got my motorcycle. So you'd ease so the I, two? Yeah. Two and, of course, the film was out. <laughs> Easy Rainer. <laughs> in his uh, newfound Eastern humility, call, he describes himself as, all, all these things are true, of course. There's no exaggeration here. Naturalist, photographer, addict, father, alcoholic, passionist, percussionist, author, poet and laureate, artist, hedonist, filmist, lover, entomologist, humorist, painter, musician, viper, husband, blackguard, <laughs> man, boy, colorist, gourmet, dancer, product of a broken home, Sympathist, philosopher, musicologist, discographer, composer, cowboy, anecdotalist, philanth philanthropist, beggar, fisherman, hunter, motorcyclist, brother, uncle, sculptor, sailor, lover, and liar. I will slap this hand and the cigarette will take eight turns and land in my mouth. <laughs> can do it.
Why we, we groove together is because, in a sense, groove. I don't like that. Why? Why? One of the reasons why we're so close, I think, is because of the enormous amount of things that we share. And normally, normally, an artist, being a very selfish, creative person, eventually has to block out his his woman or his maid or, or, from a great enormous part of, of his of his life simply because he has to go into the studio and even though physically i do that i'm in there re-caressing and re-loving and redrawing and re-dealing and re-understanding morally she's also the most intelligent girl that i know on, on any level i haven't met anybody who is uh, who has got things together i know people who've read more books but not a hell of a lot more and I certainly haven't met anybody who's more sensitive. And I haven't seen any woman that has more class. So, well, you know, what else is there? to a halt, while the dog was rushed to the vets in Guelph and a successful operation performed. We were reminded of Marco's accident on his motorcycle a year or two earlier. It was very serious. For a while it was thought he might die, and when he began to recover it was rumored that only his carefully cultivated beer belly kept his liver from being punctured when the bike fell on top of him. When he got out of the hospital several months later, he moved to the farm, and over the past while, Living quietly in the country, he's regained the use of his fingers while learning to play the piano. There's a sense of his having begun a new life. Those drawings, they come from those photographs, which I guess you can't look at, but that I took of Marlene. 
These are, can you see that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> These are sketches of, uh, of uh, ideas and pictures, right? Which got the whole series. And these sketches come pretty well directly from those from those photographs. Okay, so here's a These are, uh, again, for some unknown reason, I, I'm starting to, to play areas outside the figure in those things. I'm still into that. They're closer to the more hectic black and white things. I, it's seductive, but I really like it when splash, you don't try for them, but when splashes happen, you know, I really dig it. There's an immediacy there that. That in a sense isn't so because these things are done over long periods of time and hauling them out and going back and and for every picture here there's at least five that have been ripped up and you know. But so what? I mean it's not supposed to come easy anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But I like it to look I like it to look as though it did. I like a picture to almost complete itself while you're looking at it. You know what I mean? I do things too, like I uh, I do a picture like that, and then halfway through realize that I want it like that. You know, it's gonna be awkward when I attempt the Sistine Chapel ceiling. I mean, to turn it around like that. I like this one the best in a sense because I like the bulk of the body. You know what I mean? I mean, even even chicks that aren't Vogue proportionate, they can look really groovy, you know. These others, well, anyway, let them put one of those. And this is the last, okay? Again, coming directly out of one of those drawings. Photographs. Photographs, I mean. To retire. This is, that's the last work I've done. Except that I've been working on the paint. star in a cowboy movie. In a western? In a western, yes. Who's your favorite? Uh, favorite western, Hollywood western type? Or whatever. Who's my favorite? <laughs> Mind your own <laughs> your business, <mostest>. Charlie. <laughs> you can better show these to Markle. Let him know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> that's Vibs, eh? Yeah. That's Vibs dashing. Mm. Toward herself, headlong. Then she went away. She went off to visit her parents. I was up there alone. I wrote a lot of poetry. And committed suicide. It's like the other night I slashed my wrist with an electric razor. All it did was tingle. <laughs> John O'Keefe returns after five years, man. Where'd he been for five years? On the high seas. Is he really a sea captain? Mm-hmm. He's a sea everything. <laughs> oh, bananas flambe. That's the second <laughs> thing I thought. <laughs> you find a very, very hot Red hot wood stove, first of all. And put a frying pan on it with a banana in it, preferably peeled. And you stand back with a quart of mm -hmm. rum in one hand and a oh, quart of yeah. brandy in the other. And you go, ah! And it goes, 
and then you spend the rest of the night putting the cabin out. Jeez, <laughs> if you can ever find them, are they ever delicious? <laughs> Marvel at it. How the Charlie's good. Well, two days ago, I was getting all my stuff upset into the cleaners before I came back up here. And I walked into this cleaning store, and what had happened in, in real fact is that my, my jacket, my corduroy jacket, which is right over there, I had a box of peppermints had worked itself down into the lining and was completely, <laughs> my jacket was full of peppermints. Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, <laughs> see? And I, want, and I couldn't get it, I mean, I had peppermints in, inside, yeah. I couldn't get them out. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 so I, yeah. <laughs> no, this is very real. But there I am suddenly, and I walk in just with that in my mind. It's perfectly yeah. like my yeah. Right, yeah. yes. And finally my turn comes up and she says, may I help you, please? And I say, yes, my jacket's full of peppermints. And she said, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Those are torches, and there was a girl in a big gown in front of me. <laughs> My aim wasn't too good, and I stuck the torch right on her dress. <laughs> the dress went on fire, and as they're all singing, I'm going... <laughs> That's where I started to sing too. I'm singing my own words. This was conceived this way. But <clears throat> as a kind of scroll that you you pull out. I had a man come by here who owned a used car lot who went to school with Av Isaacs. He said, now, you see, the place over in my Chesterfield is pretty much that shape, except you got to... Now, if you'd only done it this way. So I looked at it that way, and I thought maybe it was the end of the thinnest roll of the most colorful toilet paper that ever was painted. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it that way a long time. And then I suddenly realized that what it was was a painting that was falling and unrolling by its own nature. So it went that way. Frames and frames. A lot, of, uh, a lot of my paintings, in fact, most of them, I've got two kinds. Kinds that are done in the city and completely imaginative, and in that sense, abstract misused word, but true. And the others are from nature. They're the Charlie's paintings, and I continue to do them. This is a Charlie's painting. This is naturalistic to me. It's the rapids. It's the foreground, the rapids, it's a river. And there's a, you know, there's a goddamn fully intended foreground in the classical sense of painting. There's the water, the middle ground, and there's the background, and there's deep space. Terribly out of fashion, you know. But it's a landscape painting, huh? Sure is real. That's about all I have to say about that painting. This is also that same kind of thing. It's landscape painting in a way. It's really taken from a screen door sitting inside of a cabin, and you look out and you see that. It's naturalistic painting. But they're only the sources, you know. They're, they're like flashbacks. You realize that, I realize that, in a sense, after they're done. What really, really matters is that they are paintings more than anything else. It's not what they remind me or you of. Or... It's their paintings, their paintings. If you watch Star Trek too much, you start doing paintings like this. <clears throat> Thirty-five and a half years. Uh, that's nice. And I have in my head that I want to do something. And then my hand is what I was doing before. Yeah, well, that's because you do things by half. Right? Yeah. And so I want to 
I really, I really don't understand it. You don't understand what happened? No, what you, uh, what, what you would want to do. Was that you're trying to do three things at once. You're trying to make a drawing with the color. You're trying to make the color do something in terms of form. And also, you're trying to design on the paint. Right, with, yeah. the, with one brush full of paint, you're trying yeah, to do all, all those things. Works, you can't do it. So if you just block this thing in really quickly with, yeah. with something very neutral, like, like watering the page or a gray or anything like that, yeah. and then you can sort of say, all right, now I want the head, like, like the head and the left breast and the right arm are on the same plane. So I'm going to make those blue, and then you just go bang. Was it you who was telling me that a friend or somebody you'd met no, saw his ghost? One of the other fellas. Saw his ghost, yeah. Saw it. Tom Thompson's ghost. He, he, somebody who lives up there and he paddles on Canoe Lake quite frequently. And uh, he kept hearing somebody, a canoe, paddling alongside quite often. And then one night through the mist, sure as hell, he's, he saw a canoe coming toward him. And he hailed, you know, hi, or whatever you do with it. I don't think they say ahoy in particular. <laughs> uh, and the guy just kept coming, came right out of the mist and went by, and it was Tom Thompson. To this day. You kind of identify with him a bit, don't you? Well, I like the north. I like the north. Yeah. I like to paint it. Yeah. See, that stuff is all mixed right on your brush. It's five different colors all on the same brush. And just right across. It's not mixing it up bit by bit. It's a bit of ochre on one side, an umber on one side, a bit of white, some pinks in there, and it's all on the same brush. And then you get all these very fine gradations all the way through in the brush marks. De Kooning does that too. Okay. De Kooning, when he was starting off on his... I always go back to De Kooning, but... He was setting off on his figure series after being a super duper action painter. And he said, well, I said, I'm gonna paint the figure. And he says, I decided to make it flesh color because why not? I mean, everybody thinks it's far out to make a, a figure these days blue or green or orange. But I think it's further out to paint it flesh color. So I'm gonna paint it flesh color. And then he said, and he also said, and I stuck it right in the middle of the canvas because I really couldn't see any sense. And, putting it off to one side or the other. Yeah. Well, that's, don't, I think that's really yeah. sound. I think it's beautiful fun. Yes, the city certainly is an evil place. <laughs>
Perhaps we've shown a very one-sided view of Rainer and Marco and their friends. Their lives are much more than this film could ever hope to capture. Someone over this weekend told the story of a small town in the Middle East where all the townspeople were uptight, each locked in his private grief. And someone suggested that each bring their troubles in a bag to the center of the town and take away with them the bag they felt they could handle. For a while there was a great deal of hustle and bustle as the townspeople rushed about looking in the various bags. But at the end of the day, it was discovered that everyone had returned with their own bag. Cowboy or Indian, Gemini or Virgo, country calm or city hype, who would exchange his own for another's bag? Up all night and just done his drawings. You want to show them to his friend? Who else? I did these drawings here. There's one drawing here. And I did this one. Kleenex stuck to it. You notice how I simplified the whole thing? Well, there's only two of that, is there? Yeah. I threw out 40. You painted about 10 on each one. Yeah, well, you kept coming down and saying paint some more on them, Bob. Hard dirt. Must we? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Rainer's really weird. have to adjust. Who are you? My name's Roy Marco and this is my happy home. <laughs> this is my happy goddamn wife. <laughs> and I'm right looking at the happy crew. <laughs> uh, close the goddamn door. Because I'm freezing. Let's go. <laughs> My name is Vibuka. Nodrog Rinyar. Robert Barber Marva Cobble. Gager Dagen Reganager. My name's Harold Town, and I really am going to try better and harder. Now on. I think you should. <laughs> he pushed me! <laughs> Yay! Say your name. Your real name. My real name is Michael Sarazen. <laughs> Brought to you by the makers of Robert Mark. <laughs> Close the door. Close the door. What is this? Nabi Kubota. Thank you. Nabuo Kubota. Kubota son. Uh, my name is Graham Coffrey. You <laughs> <laughs> can't fit the drums in, sorry. Good. Come on, we all get down there. Okay, get right Come up on, in man. front. Right up in front. Yeah, you 
Never mind that far. Can you lean forward, Bobby, and not hang on to you? Okay. Put your ankle. Lean right out and I'll hang on. What if it tears? If it tears, you're going to fall, that's all. Go ahead. 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 off into the sunset. Yeah. I'm Don Owen, and I directed and edited this film. Doug Kiefer photographed it, and Jim Jones did the location sound. The assistant director was Paul Saltzman, Sandy Altwerger, the assistant editor. The soundtracks were edited by Bill Graziati and re-recorded by Roger Lamoureux. Cowboy Indian was produced by Tom Daly.